Okay, so we're going to get a, a really nice perspective here. Because my background is all in excellence and science and engineering, science, technology, and engineering. So I'm, I work a lot with students like you about helping you to realise your skills. Indy's perspective comes from a slightly different place, much more focused on business and employment and human resources. So we have a really nice perspective there for us to work with. Um, so let's look at the course. Um, so PTI is an organisation in the UK whose principal job is to help researchers become excellent. That's what it's called. Um, and VTI works all across the research portfolio in the UK, delivering all kinds of courses. And they try and put things in place in organisations that help them get the best out of the results. Okay? So um, what we're bringing for the next two days is some of the materials that VTI have developed, um, some of the course materials they've developed, and some of the, the tools that they use for learning as well, that we'll, we'll explore and share as we go together. Um, so let's have a look at what we're about to do. Um, that's me. I'll show you a picture of myself. Um, I've given you a bit of background. Um, Hindi told you his name, and from that you can figure out where he was from. Um, I'm guessing none of you can figure out where I'm from from the back of the basis of my name, from my heritage. Um, I'm not Indian, as you may be able to guess. Um, so I'm from the northeast of England, um, from an industrial city called Hull. Um, which is very good at making chemicals and fishing. So that's the background of the people that I'm from. I'm descended from fishermen and chemical makers. And I've ended up in India doing this thing. Um, so let's think about the course and what it's for. Um, we're here to learn. We're also here to find out some interesting stuff from one another. Um, I'm guessing there are people in this room that you've not met before. Is that correct? Yeah. So we have we have an interesting bunch of PhD people in the room, um, so there's lots of stuff to learn from each other. So some of the things we're going to learn, um, we're going to think about our own development, what kind of stuff we, we get from going through a PhD, what kind of skills there are, what kind of things we develop. Um, we're going to practice interviews thinking about the skills that you develop that aren't your research, the other stuff. And we're going to do a little bit of exploring with interviewing one another, okay? practicing that process. Um, we're going to think about what it means to talk to industry and people like Indy who work in human resources, the people who are going to interview us for jobs. How do we talk about ourselves and our skills to those kind of people? So we're going to explore that under the way. We're going to spend quite a bit of time thinking about networking and we have someone in the room who's going to be a good person for us to watch. So as we go through the conference, um, we're going to keep half an hour on Indy. So Indy's a great networker. Um, so we're going to slightly watch his progress through the next two days. He's going to disappear off into the conference. Um, when we're having tea breaks and at lunch, you'll see Indy talking to people. So Indy's a really good networker. So watch him and watch how he does it. It's fantastic to watch. If he disappears off and then he comes back smiling, it means he's had a good networking experience. So we'll, we'll watch Indy as we go through. Um, one of the things that we'd like to finish off with the two days is coming up with a personal action plan. What is it that we're going to do that's going to help us get better at all this stuff so we can realise what we want in our life? Um, this is quite a wordy slide. There's lots of information on there. So I've kind of summarised it a bit, a bit more simply for you. Um, so we're going to reflect on how good we are. Okay? You are you're a cream of PhD researchers, so we're going to reflect on that and acknowledge that. Uh, we're going to practice telling people about it. We're going to practice telling people about it. We're going to practice telling people about it, and then we're going to make a plan. Okay. So that's pretty much what we're going to do. There's going to be lots of talking, lots of discussion, and lots of activity. Because okay. frankly, two days of be stuck here lecturing to me is not going to be much fun. So we're going to try and have a bit more fun by talking to each other. Um, this is the process that I use a lot in my workshops when I do training and development in the UK. Um, and activity based learning. I'm really interested in us doing things, doing activities, discussing things. Um, so we're going to go through that a little bit. But it's really important when we've done things that we actually reflect about that process as well. So we're, we review what we do, we think about it and we spend a bit of time doing that. Um, and through that we'll make some sense of what's happened, make some conclusions and then we'll plan for the next step. So in my general life when I was a scientist, I was really good at doing stuff. I was a fantastic scientist, great at making experiments, great at all that kind of stuff. I wasn't very good at being reflective. 
I just kind of went along and then went on to the next experiment and went on to the next one. And there was always stuff to do in science. There's always things to do. And it's taken me a long time to realize the importance of reflection. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of that as we go through the day. Um, to allow us to do that, we're going to talk to each other a lot. Okay, we're going to have lots of group discussions, get to know each other, find out what's going on in these different arenas that we're working in. And you're going to write some stuff down. You're going to reflect as well on what's going on stuff, because that's a really important thing of recording what we do. Um, what we'd like is for you to go back to wherever you go, to your research on all the things we learn over the two days are going to be really useful for your research journey. Okay. Um, so let's just have a heads up of what we're going to do. Um, we're currently in welcome and introductions element of this slide. Um, we're going to think a little bit about professional development think about our skills and competencies as a researcher in, in different ways, thinking about how we provide evidence for that when we talk to other people, um, doing some things around networking, okay? There's going to be lots of interesting people to talk to over the next two days, so we're going to practice that a lot. Um, tomorrow we'll think a bit more about communication itself and how we can be effective in how we talk to other people and we'll think about specifically how we can talk to employers, okay. which is going to be the next big step for you guys, I guess, and what's going on. Um, then we're going to go off, meet some people from the conference, and then we'll come back here together and reflect on how that was and think about the next steps. So that's our plan. Just have a read of this, if you will. Um, so Gareth Roberts was really pivotal around the time I was doing my research. This quote was from around about 2003, I think, which is when I was a PhD researcher. And this really struck me as being an interesting thing. I'd always thought of research and qualifications as something that you went off and got. They were useful for your CV. It was great to have a bachelor's and a master's and then a PhD. And I was collecting qualifications, as I'm sure many of you have done. And this kind of really struck a chord that the journey I've been on as a researcher wasn't just about being called Dr. Russell, although that's really nice and it's quite important. Um, it was the development of me. And I really like this quote that you know, research is important. We need to make original knowledge. We need to make a contribution to the world. But actually, we need to be excellent as well. And I really like this idea that part of the development process is about making you guys excellent. So I'd like us to think about that over the next couple of days. Um, what do you know about this? <laughs> Professional development planning. What does that mean to you? It's about sharpening your professional skills. Okay, so adding to your professional skills. Yeah. Okay, anything else? Planning a skill set, development or planning a skill set that you should uh, require for a certain level. Okay. So planning your skill set, thinking about what you need and how do we go and get that stuff. Yeah, okay. Great stuff. So some good examples. Um, this is just one interpretation of what you've just said. Okay, so some key things to, to note on there. I, I like the idea that it's a supported process. It's not something we just do ourselves. It's We get support to do it. Okay. Um, some of the words that you said have come up there. So definitely planning, thinking about your skills and what to come next. I like this. I like the fact that it's broadened out into being personal, educational and career. Um, I think when we get to this level of research and education, there's a tendency to just think about the second two. Just think about our career and our education and forget about ourselves and developing ourselves as well. Um, you guys are in a very competitive market. There's lots of PhD students in India, I'm guessing. I read a statistic recently that there's more honours graduates in India than there are children in the US. It's a kind of interesting. So you produce more people with degrees than the US produces children. This is a competitive market. Um, and there's a danger in that. We can start thinking that we just need to collect degrees. Uh, I presume you've all got a bachelor's degree. Yeah? Has anyone got a master's degree? All have got a master's degree. No, no, some of you haven't. Okay, catch up. You need a master's degree. <laughs> um, and you're all about to have PhDs. Yeah, okay. 
but look around the room. We've already got 20 competitors in the room. This is kind of an interesting thing. And the thing that's going to make the difference is this personal development. People are going to want to employ you with your degrees and your PhDs, but also because you're going to be a fantastic person to work for. You're going to bring something extra to the company that you work for. Um, and personal development is the way to do that. Um, let's just have a quick look at a cycle of how we might approach professional development planning. Um, so you talked about this, identifying your strengths. Okay, what am I really good at and what might be missing? Okay, it's a great place to start. Reflecting on what have I got that's fantastic and what do I need? Um, and then we can start thinking about what to do about it. How do we fill in that gap? How do we get good at the thing that we want to get good at? Um, well, going on training courses is a good way of doing that. So we can go and do some actions. We can learn how to do this thing or learn how to do this thing. Um, and then we can review that process. Did that give me what we needed? Okay. Um, what we need to start doing then is building up a portfolio of evidence, recording this action. So we've got something to present when we come to interviews and applying for jobs. Um, but also reporting on your progress. So this idea of supported progress is really important. Reporting on that is exactly what we need to do. So let's give you guys a chance to have a little bit of a chat. Um, I'm going to stop talking for a while and let you talk to one another for a little while. Um, so a couple of questions. Um, are you already doing any professional development planning? That's the first question for you to chat with your friends about. Um, and what are or what might be the advantages in doing it? Okay. Um, we have a room full of people. So let's have a chance for you to um, just have a chat around these questions and then we'll try and find out a little bit about, more about who we have in the room. Okay. So spend a couple of minutes talking to the people around you about these questions. We'll get some feedback and find out who's in the room. Okay. So I'll see you in a little while. Now, so who, who is currently doing some professional development planning? <coughs> Nobody. Everybody. Okay. Okay, so is this part of what you have to do already? It's part of your process. So what kind of stuff are you doing? Tell me. Benchmarking. Benchmarking. Okay, you're already doing some benchmarking stuff. Okay, what kind of stuff? Okay. So you're already you're way ahead of the game. This is good to know. So you're already doing some benchmarking. Okay, we'll look at that in a bit more detail uh, probably a bit later on today, I think. Yeah, okay. What, what else are you doing? Uh, PhD student, I think as a researcher, what is the most important thing is to become a good researcher. Okay. Uh, uh, professional part, I will relate to become a good researcher, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, as professional development, most of the time we uh, are spending our time in our lab, right? Sure. And yeah. uh, we learn from our lab mates, right? Uh, we talk about uh, what are the drawbacks we have, like lacking uh, technical skills or communication skills. Yep. Most of the time we are communicating with it. Yeah. From that perspective, from technical development, okay, we have a group of people from where we learn. But from uh, uh, just, um, this uh, yeah, personality development, like uh, what are the competencies, what are the things that are required in the industries, mm -hmm. from that perspective we lack because we know such organizations that can allocate such things in our so all the technical side of things that you're, you're fine at, learning how to do research and be technically adept in your field, that's great, but the personal stuff's missing. Yes. Yeah, okay. Is that, is that true of everyone or do people get more training on the personal side? Yeah, my name is Chandresh and I'm from my team. Okay. Yeah, my name is Chandresh and I'm from my team. Okay. So when you're speaking, then you're it will be easy to program it. Okay. Another issue is like you, uh, the constraints which you face and the like, as, as when you are in lab, you don't face that many situations. You are, you are, you'll be focused on your pieces. But the area is very, like when you go out, it's very broad. Mm -hmm. we, we need to face that, we need to be ready to face that situation. Okay. Yeah, and, and this is what this is all about. It's that readiness to be able to be adaptable and work in lots of different areas. Because, um, let's, 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 answer this question and find out uh, kind of which institutes that you're from. So if we could just get a sense of which institutes you're from, whereabouts in India you've come from, that would be quite useful. So um, you said you're from Mumbai. Yeah, so what's your institution? IED. Okay. IED. IID. Okay. I'm presuming you know what that means. I don't know what that means. Indian Institute of Technology. Institute, Indian Institute of Technology in Mumbai. So who's from that institute? So lots of you. 
Okay, so there's a big one, two, three, four. Five, yeah. Okay, so quite a lot from there. Where where are the people from? IIT Delhi. IIT IIT Delhi. Okay, so we have three of you from from Delhi. Yeah, yeah from Delhi. Okay, from the Agricultural Research Institute. Okay. Okay. And are you the only one from that institution? Yeah. And yeah. Okay. 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 Okay, and where is that? Near Calcutta. Okay. And my name is Ayat Yuruki, Indian Institute of Technology. This is the first project. Okay, so we're having an oldest competition. I'm not going to. You're from the oldest, you're from the second oldest. Okay, this is good to know. So you've traveled from all different distances, okay? Different institutions, okay. And so would it be useful for you guys to talk to one another, people who are from different institutions, and learn some interesting stuff? Okay. Um, so what I'd like to do over the two days is exactly what you said. How do we start thinking about the stuff that's the personal element? Um, I am a scientist, so I probably could help you with your research skills, but that's not what we're here for today. We're here to think about the personal development stuff, okay? Um, did you get to uh, why it might be useful? Any advantages? Did you answer that question? Uh, this will help us in uh, like what industries are looking for. Yeah. And it will also develop the skills that uh, so that we can present our then better. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So th you're absolutely right. We need to understand all the things that we're good at, all the things that we've got to offer, but also match that with what we think the employers want what industry want. Um, it's an interesting thing. You would think having a PhD from a fantastic institution would be great, um, but it doesn't always map out like that. Uh, certainly in the UK, um, employers often tell universities that the students are missing certain things. They're not particularly good at in, in these areas. And often it's because of the focus you've talked about that we're so entrenched in the laboratory or wherever we work with our research skills. We don't have the time or the resources to develop the other side of things. And this is part of the reason that VTAR exists, is to provide that kind of course. Um, so we'll do that. And I like the way you talked about selling and mar marketing yourself. I think it's a really valuable tool to be able to say to someone, actually, I can offer this and provide evidence for that. That's a great way of making yourself employable. Um, let's find my clicker. So that's some of the advantages you've talked about. Um, here's some that we've come up with. Um, so understanding the stuff that you really like doing the stuff that excites you, is that working in the laboratory by yourself or is it talking to people about your research? There will all be kinds of different things that, you, that really excite you about your work, the bit about your day-to-day -day life and research that gets you interested. Um, I really liked being on the bench, working with my stuff, solving the problems. I really loved that sort of stuff. But I also liked going off to schools and giving talks about my work and that kind of stuff. And I really liked developing the students I worked with. That's what was most interesting to me, which is why I do that as a job now. Um, but finding that stuff, the stuff that makes you excited, is really important. Um, so the stuff that you're really good at, uh, the stuff that you're perhaps need a bit of, of work on, okay? That's one of the advantages of doing this, finding out what skills you need to be able to do the things you want to do. Um, thinking about where to go next, what directions you might be wanting to go in. Um, there's lots of career options available for you. Um, just out of interest, who wants to stay and work in a university after they finish their PhD? Put your hand up if you do. Okay, so just you. Okay, so you're the other one who needs the job. Uh, who wants to work in industry? Okay, so pretty much a fair few else of you. Okay, They're just kind of interesting. Um, who wants to be a teacher? Yeah? Okay. Who wants to start their own business? Okay, so this kind of idea of different options and knowing what you want is really, really valuable. Um, 
thinking about how you learn best as well is a really useful thing to do. Um, we're quite far towards the end of our educational process, but the learning doesn't really stop once you finish your PhD. You have to keep doing it, you have to keep learning new things, and finding out how you learn best is a really useful thing to discover. Um, a good advantage is being in charge. I run my own business, so I like being in charge. It's nice to be your own boss. But with that, you have to be responsible. I have to make decisions about what training I need to go and get, what skills I need to develop, what opportunities to explore. Is it good for my business to come to India? That was one of the questions I had to ask. So we'll see. Um, how about this one? This is what you talked about, marketing and selling. Being able to articulate your skills and knowledge to other people so you can persuade them that you're exactly the right person to employ. And here are three things that I'd really like to give you over the next couple of days. Okay? I really want you to focus on the particular aspects of your development. Okay? I'd like to give you some motivation to go off and do some personal development planning and to pursue different opportunities of getting skills. And I'd like you to go away from here feeling more confident that you're actually really employable and you are going to set up that business. You are going to work in a university. You are going to be a teacher. You are going to go and work off in industry. I'd like to give you that confidence over the next two days. Um, right, let's have a look. Um, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit, actually. There's a, there are a couple of things on. These are just some references on reflective practice. Uh, we can flip back to these in a little while. Um, useful things for you to think about. As I mentioned, I wasn't very good at reflective practice as a, as a scientist. I was very good at being in the lab. Um, all these technical skills you talked about, I loved that side of things. I didn't reflect too much. But research suggests it's actually a really valuable tool to do that. Um, um, let's ask ourselves this question instead. Um, can find my post-it notes? No, I can't. Okay. Um, do you all have something to write down and write down with? Okay, perfect. Um, just a couple of questions, really straightforward, just for you to reflect. Um, what do you want out of the next two days? Okay. Um, we're here together. The British Council have kindly flown me in from England to be with you, so you need to make use of me. Okay. You need to get something useful from me for two days. Um, so just think about what are your objectives for this course? So what do you want by the end of tomorrow? But also think a little bit more broadly, what objectives, what would you like to develop in yourself uh, over the coming months, okay? Um, so just have a write down and we'll get a bit of feedback and we'll see where we go from there. And then we'll do some group work, okay? So just spend five minutes just reflecting on those. <coughs> we, we got some, some things written down. Okay, um, so let's have a bit of feedback from you about the kind of things that you want, because we have two days together. Um, it's important for me that you get what you need out of these two days. So let's hear some examples of things that you would like from the next two days. So tell me. First of all, I would like to know, I mean, what are my strengths Okay. Whether I'm able to communicate effectively. Okay. Then, after judging myself, I will do what these things are looking for. Okay. How to uh, form a good network of people okay. so that uh, I can get to know about them and what are my action plans so that um, how to execute them to yeah. achieve my end goal. Excellent. My end goal would be how, uh, how I can be a good human being as well as how I can be a good researcher. Okay, excellent. You're on the right course. Good. Um, um, can everyone hear everyone else? I don't know if in here aren't great. Let's kind of recap. So that was advantages about, let's find out what <coughs> skills I have, okay? Um, let's find out what skills employers want and see if they're the same. And also some stuff around making an action plan. And I like the bit at the end about you want to become a good human being. Setting me a good task for the next few days. I need to be a good human being. So, okay, I will try my best on that one. Uh, what other kind of things did we have? I feel very nervous when I speak to people. Very narrow. Yeah, nervous. Oh, nervous. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so being more confident in yeah. being up here, talking. Okay. So we'll do some practice of that kind of stuff. Lack of execution. Lack of execution. You plan a lot. Like, okay. Yeah. Uh, so you're one of those, are you? You, you, you the plan it, the plan bit works. Plan should be executed properly. Okay. So actually doing the stuff. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. So as well as planning, we need to actually do some stuff. Okay. Yeah. What else? Okay. 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 So how do you diversify out into? We're experts in our thing, but how do we move slightly across? Yeah, this is a tough one, isn't it? So I, I'm a physicist, and as part of my research, I went off to work in an immunology lab. Okay. And I felt like a, a fool. <laughs> I was really great at being a physicist. I knew I built my equipment from scratch. I knew all the theory. And then I walk into this different laboratory, and I'm the stupidest person in the room. And how do you know how to figure it out? How do you get good at learning this new technique? Um, yeah, and finding out how you learn is a great way of doing that. Excellent. What else do we have? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, how do we manage all this different kind of stuff that's going on? It's quite varied work, and we have to be able to manage it all. Okay. 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 And that's why I wanted to know. Actually, I'm technically strong in manufacturing some products. So, in some place, if, if I'm going to explain about my product, they are expecting something apart from technical knowledge. So okay. In that time, what they are telling is even though some marketing people is coming and giving some seminar, they thought he is better than me. But as a technically, we don't know how to express these kind of things. Okay. And this is the first thing I wanted to know. And uh, after that, uh, and how we have to commercialize. I'm going to uh, my product. So okay. I'm okay, so we have a couple of things there. So I'm guessing we've all got really good technical knowledge. Is that I fair? Developed the company in, uh, persuading people about uh, doing business with my research. Okay. Sometimes uh, I'm telling about the company they have their own product lines and uh, they want to, to stick with their own research. Mm -hmm. So how do we align my research and your research? Okay. Yeah, so there's a couple of things. So moving beyond this technical knowledge and the ability to talk technically and explain to people that we have other things to offer. How do we get that on board? But yeah, also aligning ourselves, that's really nice. Finding out what their interests are and how do we make sure we get the right things so that we're in tune with what they want to do. Okay, absolutely. Anything else? Okay. So, so how do we approach things in the right way so that we get what we want out of it? Okay. We'll draw some expertise from Indy in approaching okay, a l later on. This is something I've had to learn because I was in your shoes uh, just over 10 years ago doing a PhD and, and I was great with the technical stuff and it's taken me quite a while to learn how to do this kind of stuff. And even now I watch Indy work and he's much, much more natural. He's talked to everybody we've seen in India so far, as far as I can tell, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, but that approach is really important, isn't it? We need to make that. Is there anything else? Any other objectives we have? Maximizing the throughput efficiency. So we do a lot of things, but half of them we do able to use the public stand. Sure. At the end of the day, we have to sell all Yeah, okay. So ma maximizing your research out, but yeah, that's one thing. I'm not sure I can help you with that over the next two days, but <laughs> we'll see. From technical perspective, yeah. on the um, yeah. personality of but yeah, and I think some way it might just be that research is a bit like that. You, you fail more than you don't. <laughs> That's just kind of the world of research. You're generating new stuff. It's part of the business. Yeah. How can we what, sorry? Okay. How can we attract other people? Okay. Yeah, this is a great thing, isn't it? Getting people to come and work with us and be on board with our ideas. Yeah, absolutely. Um, any from the back? What do you guys want from the two days? Nothing at all? Okay, good stuff. Okay, um, let's do some stuff together, give you a chance to talk in bigger groups. I've got you a, a small challenge. I want us to think about ourselves as researchers is one thing, but let's think about a, an idealized researcher, a superstar researcher, if you can imagine such a thing, a superhero researcher, if you can imagine this as a kind of character. Um, so what makes them successful? Um, what kind of things do they exhibit? What skills do they have? What knowledge? Um, what kind of things that they do? Um, what qualities, what kind of behaviours do they have? Okay. 
So this is the kind of thing we're going to conjure up, this idealized version of a researcher. Um, but I want to play with it in a slightly different way. Okay? So rather than just making a list, it's making a list easy, uh, we're going to draw them. Okay? We're gonna, I'm going to give you a poster and we're going to draw an idealized researcher, or rather you are, in your little groups. Um, does that make sense as a task? So draw a researcher. You can, make, you can play with whatever way you want. I'm going to show you two examples that I've collected from different groups when I've worked. I, worked out, I did this course out in Japan earlier in the year. Um, and so there's a couple of collections from people who have developed, one in Japan and one in the UK. Um, so we're going to draw this idealized researcher. Um, ideally, I'd like you to draw it all, not have any words on there at all, if you can do that. Just all the capabilities that you think of, how can you demonstrate those by drawing? Okay. Um, so to do this, I think we'll get, you into, we'll get you into four groups. So that should be groups of five or six. Um, these chairs do spin round, so we'll be able to make little, little tables. So once you've got a big room, so find some space. I'd recommend finding people you don't know so well, a part of the, the joy of exploring this, and then you'll get to meet them. Um, we'll give ourselves a nice chunk of time for this, um, so you can meet the new people in your group, um, have a conversation around these skills, and produce a beautiful piece of art. Okay, so that's the plan. Um, would you like to see some examples, or are you going to just... No, you'd like to see some examples. Okay, so this is this exact same activity done by one group in Japan and one group in the UK. And that's the kind of stuff that they came up with. <coughs> so, all kinds of stuff going on there. Um, no words on there. They just drew and interpreted the stuff. I'm going to take those away, otherwise you'll just copy them. Um, so, your first job is to get yourselves into four groups of six. And once you're set around in pods, I'll bring you some paper and pen. So, once you're in your groups, I'll bring you some stuff. Yeah. So this is the bit where you'll have to get up and move around. Find somewhere to sit. Tell us what it's all about. The model is about the how a PhD student life goes in his life. So a school guy, or you can say a master's degree student, he has a dream to, I want to be a scientist someday in my life. Give society a technology and something to to serve society. So with that dream, he entered in PhD or in research uh, in his research life. So he started with uh, identifying a research problem or a problem which which, which had actually uh, making problem to the real world. So he has books and he has all uh, tables full, full of full of stack of papers. Then in the next stage, his uh, thinking how to solve it. So you can see there is a computer and he, he has his hands on his mind thinking about how to approach it. Approach it like the workshop is all about. Okay, in the next <coughs> step, it's like a long life. You can see there is a sonocidal uh, way. So the upper thing is so the happiness. You can see there is a broadness at the start, but in the end it is so it's like just like a life. So it, it got it gets decreased in time. But again, at the end, it's like a full happiness only. And then, so this is the state of the mind. This is the time period, something uh, going like this. So you can see the smiley face and the sorrow face here. Yeah. OK. So in, in the second last picture, uh, we have, he has attended focus, knowledge, and whatever this, so all the skills that I, I think we all will get after this workshop. Yeah. So this is in the uh, second last picture. And in the last picture, he has got degree certificate. And then uh, he has got money also, like in our rupees, dollar, and and he is he he he, he is successful up, uh, in being a good researcher, asking himself so his mind value. Okay. Right. okay, perfect. Let's give him a round of applause. Okay, so I'm, I'm loving this sinusoidal wave of happiness. So where are, where are we guys now in our PhDs? Are you in a happy place or are you in a no? We don't know. Okay. Receive a work on happiness. Thank you. I love this idea of a journey as well. A journey and how it changes and collects stuff. Really, really nice. So thank you very much. Who's going to go next? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Narendra, you've been volunteered.
Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what we were asked to draw was a super scientist who is a super scientist and what are yeah. uh, what are the qualities will get displayed. So this is our super scientist. I'll show you one by one feature and my friend will add to it. So a super scientist has of course to a very basic idea has a very super fertile brain which has ideas of all themes of science and engineering and technology which can the arrows, two way arrows which <coughs> can integrate all the knowledge for his ideas to create something. The golden ring on the head so that a super scientist is an ethical person though very okay. super skill, he yeah. still applies his knowledge for very ethical purposes. The bright one right here shows he keeps on having innovative ideas for applications from his knowledge of all fields of sciences since he is a super person. On one hand, side, he shows that he is teaching his students on a blackboard, so he teaches, he develops the next line of scientists, he propagates his knowledge as a super scientist, as well as he wants to keep the knowledge without growing and collaborating. On the other hand, it is shown that there are people of all kinds, tall, short, white, black, uh, aged, disabled, so that shows the social issues that in one arm of his early diverse group of people, so he works towards social inclusion, being a super scientist, he does, does deliver to his society. And that's what social inclusion shows. Down shows his technological progress for social impact. On one side you see Byron Man, a man putting a farmer putting his head on his head, uh, maybe some water scarcity or some climate change scale on the top. This is the scientific progress to take society with him and he's a nice bumper crawl the man is uh, happy. Reverse flowing, so it shows this technological progress for social impact as well, apart from high science that we have to And apart from that, our scientist doesn't have a face. We don't know whether he's a man, he's a woman, he's old, he's young, he's Asian, he's English, he's Welsh, or he's American, nothing. So he's a scientist, he's a human being, and not somebody. He's not a common person who has a personality to show off. He's okay. just his human. He knows he's a super scientist. Doing for the end. So there's a small point of view. Out of all this doing all these things, it's a happy man. Okay. And has some fun in life. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much. I love this idea about being ethical and about thinking about the actual real world as well, rather than just our scientists. That's a really nice take on it. So thank you very much for that. Okay, who do we have next? We have this. Okay, let's go. Perfect, thank you very much. 
I really like that idea of having a bucket of skills where you collect all your stuff in. I think that's actually quite a, a good metaphor. I've liked doing that. Just collecting things as you go through your life that you can then do is really, really valuable. Um, okay, so last up, we have this one. Okay, that's great stuff. Thank you very much. I'm really liking this idea of a, a researcher who's happy and smiling and just problems come in this end and publications come out this end. I, wonder, I don't know, I've never met a researcher like that, but it's a nice thing to think about. Okay, so we're going to use these posters as inspiration over the next couple of days. We'll stick them up on the wall at the back. Because um, this is kind of what we're aiming for, isn't it? By designing this idealised research, we kind of want to be like that. We want to have this stuff. We want to make a difference in the world. We want to be effective. Um, we want to have ethics and values. And we want to be happy. You all put something down about wanting to be happy and smiling, which is kind of nice. We'd all like that. So what we'll do over the next couple of days is work towards getting us closer to these pictures that we've created. So thank you for doing those. Um, I'm going to suggest we take a break, um, have a short break, and then when we come back, we'll bring in some of Vitae's tools about personal development, and we'll start to play around with those a little bit in some groups, okay? Um, so um, given your little insight into Indian time you've just given me, how long, how long do we need for a break? Five minutes. Five minutes, that's the answer. It's always five minutes. So how about we start at 12 o'clock on that clock? Is that enough time to grab some tea? Yeah. yeah? Perfect, okay. So we'll start at 12 o'clock. See you in a little while. Let's ask how it was created, okay. So it was developed by people like you. So um, Vita went off and they did lots of interviews with researchers from PhD level up to senior researchers. And they kind of asked them what kind of skills were were useful, what behaviours they had. So it was very interview based. We really tried to find out what the researchers were doing. So it's a tool developed by the researchers, and researchers, researchers themselves. Um, no one really knows what phenomenographic means. <laughs> um, it basically means doing it in the job. We observe what happened. Okay, so we got to find researchers and find out what they're actually doing. Okay, so we were looking at the characteristics that researchers um, displayed. Um, what kind of things that they were doing on their day-to-day -day jobs. We asked lots of um, experts, uh, so this would be people from senior members of universities to industry panels to experts in particular fields, so there's lots of input into how this thing was shaped in the end. And from that we developed this idea of four different domains of knowledge and characteristics that we worked around um, a while. Um, but these four different areas are quite a good way of breaking down our skill sets. So let's have a look at it. Um, so here are the four basic things. You'll explore this in a little bit more detail, so don't feel you have to read everything that's on the slide at the moment. But the four areas are around impact, um, influence, engagement. So this is the outside stuff. How do you deal with the world outside you? How do you communicate and deal with the outside things? Uh, the knowledge and intellectual abilities. This will be an arena that you're really comfortable with, because this is what we do as PhD researchers. We know about our knowledge and our intellectual capabilities. Um, but then moving down to the bottom, the stuff around research, governance and organisation. Um, Ajay, you talked about planning but not doing. So this is kind of a good section for you, how we, um, how we manage the process of being a researcher. And actually that development of organisation is really, really key. And then finally, personal effectiveness. This is us being able to go outside into any arena and be effective because we've got the skills of a researcher. So I do this job now, but I've done all kinds of strange jobs. Um, this job actually doesn't require a PhD. No one has asked me for a certificate. 
but it's really, really valuable that I've done that process. The skills I learned over that course of four years doing PhD research would have taken me a long time somewhere else to develop those skill sets. Um, so I've done all kinds of strange things with my PhD. I've worked in universities, but here's an unusual job. Uh, for a short while after my son was born, I ran a toddler group. Okay? So I looked after little children. Now this was for, largely for dads who uh, wanted some outlet to look after their children. Um, I did that at PhD level because I've got all this stuff. So it was a really brilliant toddler group. We were really, really effective because we had, in fact, two people had PhDs who ran that toddler group. It's kind of an unusual aspect. Um, one in physics and one in philosophy. You beat that. Philosophy and a physics PhD running a toddler group. Strange things happen. Um, so we can expand these broad subjects out and we can add an extra layer to it. So let's just broaden that out. So we can break down those domains into different areas. So if we went for knowledge and intellectual abilities, for example, we might break that down into knowledge base, cognitive abilities, and creativity. So the different ways we have about thinking around stuff. And we can start to break these areas down. So we end up with four domains and then each of those into three subdomains. And then we can start thinking about the characteristics that we have there. Um, I'm kind of interested in creativity. So if we went to the creativity box over here, up at the top, the kind of things that we might have were inquiring mind, intellectual insight, innovation. You remember all the light bulbs that you were drawing on your posters about this idea that researchers all have this creativity, this idea to solve problems. So we can break it down a little bit from there. Um, so that's it up on the screen. Um, it's quite an immersive thing. So what I suggest we do is get a little bit more hands-on with this and play around with the, the, the cards. So I'm going to give you if we get into three groups, which will be round about eight of you per group, and then we'll each have a pack of cards to play with, and then we can take off the different domains into pairs or something to get a little bit more knowledge. I'm just going to show you what's in here um, to help you out. So you have a few bits and bobs. So you'll end up with a, a little poster with one of these. And so this kind of explains it in detail. Um, also in here, there's lots of stuff around the the sections themselves. So if you can kind of see, you've got this, all the A's, B's and C's, they're all kind of spread around. And each of these is really detailed. Um, so there's quite a lot to take in, which is why I'm going to give you big groups. Um, there's also so stuff on the back. We'll kind of get to that in a little while, so you don't need to worry about that straight away. But by all means, be nosy if you want to. Um, and also in the pack, there's some other stuff um, which kind of sums it up a little bit more and some activities. We don't need to worry about those just yet. We'll get to those in a little while, but by all means, have a look through them. So um, what we need to do is rearrange ourselves a bit. Um, so we have, I think if we get into three groups, I don't mind where, and if you have a little bit of space so you can spread out the cards, so maybe spin your chairs around. Um, again, there's opportunity to work with new people here. So if you muddle yourselves around, once you're in three groups of eight-ish, I will um, bring you the cards. Is that okay? Okay, so find yourself somewhere to be, and then we'll uh, bring you some stuff. Yeah, that's okay. I'm getting hungry. I'm guessing everyone's getting hungry, so we need to move on. And we have um, somebody who's going to speak to us just for a few minutes before we go off for our lunch. So if you just put all your cards down, and then we'll have five minutes talk, and then we'll be going off to get some food, okay? <laughs>